Hello and welcome. My name is Karl Lindenbrugger and today I'd like to introduce how to work with the unit test facade Shuko AFUDC-80 in Chicago. At the beginning, we take a look at the system templates during this small video, and um, then we also talk about the technical settings of the facade, and uh, we also talk about the unit parameters and field segmentation. Um, I like to introduce what is about the insert units, and we also take a closer look to the Sunshade CDS in Shuku AF UDC 80. Um, working with the unit test facade AF UDC 80, you've got uh, a couple of options, some or designs. You've got a classic arrangement, you've got offset units, and also diagonal glazing bars. And so that means you can add sloped sash bars or uh, let's say transoms into your construction. And now we go directly into the chicale. And um, here I've prepared some items in order to show you how the unitized facade works within chicale. And um, I've prepared just here an um, uh, item without using the construction in order to show you where you to find all the templates. If you go to the facade here, and if you go to unitized facade, you've got three options. We can work on 3D units, uh, unit one by one, which you can multiply with any number of it. So by the way, uh, 100 by 100 fields are possible for this construction. And we've also got a template unit three by field, three by three fields on which you can work on. And of course you can extend the number of fields also with this template. And uh, if you mark this unit three by three fields, you've got the Shuku AF UDC 80 profile system here. I double click on it. And then you see here the wire model as you probably know from our other facade systems. On the left hand side, you've got the usual parameters and I want to get the width 4,500 millimeter. <clears throat> so the thermal insulation here, you've got the option to work on the SI, SI plus XPS, HI or standard thermal insulation. And quite interesting is here, the design is related to the basic depth. So you've got a standard with a small front chamber. You can choose from a standard with a large front chamber or CV, CV means you get a concealed vent. I like to introduce this during this video here. And if you take a closer look to the basic depth, so if you work with a standard with a small front chamber, you have 130, 155, and 180 millimeter profile depth. Whereas if you work on standard with a large front chamber, you've got starting with 180, 205, 230, and 255 <clears throat> basic depth. And you've got nearly the same if you work with a concealed bent construction, you also have the same basic depths here. I want to go back to the standard with a large front chamber, click on that. And then I apply my construction here with glass. And also profiles. And on which we now take a closer look at. Here you find the SI insulation, you can find the coupling gasket or center gasket here, and here the coupling gasket here on top. And this small one here is the front chamber gasket. The horizontal section looks like that. Here also you've got the front chamber gasket, here you've got the saddle gasket, and here you've got the coupling gasket for the horizontal transoms. Well, what you can do now is, 
I like to merge these fields together, merge the area here, and uh, then I change the view from the, the inside. And if I select the profile, you can change the profile reference dimension here on the left hand side in this dialog. And for example, it should be 750 millimeter on the left. And I do the same on the right, but it must be minus 750 millimeter. So what you can do also, you can split this area here. And for example, if you want to have um, number of width fields two, number of heights should be one. And if you click on OK, then here you get a construction like this. By the way, new no U value calculation can be carried out at the moment. And uh, what you do not get if you have a construction like this with this um, stepped fields, let's say there is no preliminary structural calculation possible, right? And uh, so for that, you get a message here that the of the position of the units means that there's no automatic calculation of the coupling and centering pieces. And so you should discuss this with our uh, structural engineers so that you get some consulting how to work with this construction and uh, the required coupling and centering pieces must be entered as additional material. And if you're aware about this, you can make a multiple selection and you can accept these messages like that. Well, as you can see, this kind of modular facade is uh, quite simple to use. And it's very similar if you work with sloped items like that. I've prepared here my next construction. <laughs> and what I did is, as you can see, I have designed some helplines here. I just draw here some helplines. As you can see, you can draw helplines or parallel lines. And um, in order to create sloped mullions or transoms like this here. And once you did this, you go to draw a subdivision, you, you zoom in, you snap on one point like this, and then you go to the to the opposite, you zoom in, snap the next point, and automatically you get a sloped construction, right? So just by using some helplines, as you probably know from any CAD pro programs, it works the same. You can design your sloped mullions and transoms. So, but I want to work a little bit more on this construction. And for that, I make a multiple selection for field number five and 15. Um, right click, split areas. And I want to get two width fields, one height field. And I just want to add some input dimensions. And let's say my first segment dimension should be 700, not 7,000 millimeter. Then you get here the mullions inside your construction, or let's say sesh bars for the unitized facade. And I also want to split here, field number 10, split areas, again, to width one height field, the input dimension, and now the segment dimension two should be 700 millimeter. And going on OK, you have a construction like this. Well, what you can do is, um, I want to add some panels here. 
And also for that, I make a multiple selection for these small fields and go to my glass and panel, use my panel P1. And here you go. You see that? And uh, if you take a closer look now to this construction, I've added here on the left side here, a spandrel ventilation. You see that here, here you've got um, a triple glazing and here, let's take a closer look to that. That's a ventilated spandrel. It's actually a fixed glazing, but with the option ventilated spandrel. How you can do this, if you make a multiple selection for these fields, come on. And instead on, get it here. Ah, here it is. And instead of the standard glazing, you get the ventilated spandrel. Right, and of course, here you can make a multiple selection also for these fields in order to get the spindle inside. What else you can do is you can create slopes here. So um, if you make a right click on this joint, you've got two options, move joints or move individual joints. Move joints means that uh, you get a slope mm, along the total width of the item and if you go to move individual joint if you click on that you can snap for example the center here click on that and then you've got the boundary field here sloped and what else can you do you can also make do this with this one here Make a right click, move individual joint, click on here, for example, exactly the center of this field. And then you get a construction which looks like this. So as you can see, it's quite simple to work with this kind of facade. And um, it's quite interesting this to work with this facade here. And um, you also get, a, by the way, a message that uh, infill must be fabricated by the customer. And uh, that is for these fields here for the spandrel drawing, you know that? And you can also confirm this to accept the messages. What about the helplines? You can get rid of them if you use the function delete all. That's it, your construction is ready. So the summary is you can design sloped dash bars or transoms, and you can also move individual joints in order to get the construction like this. Well, leaving this item now, I go to the next unit that is uh, the 90 degree corner. Mm. What you can do is here, if you take a close look to the parameter list on the left hand side, uh, you can define different angles for um, each plane. That means you can use inner or outer corners. I'd like to show this now. Um, for example, if this, I want to change the length to 5,400 here, you see that here, that's the length number one. 
And uh, you can also define the number of width fields for that. And let's make it four, like that. You go back, of course, because of the new division here to your wire model, but it makes, it's not a problem here. So the angle two is 90 degree, let's say 2,700 millimeters. So we leave it as it is. And the number of width fields are two, that is this small one. And um, if I extend the number of surfaces here from two to three, you can do the following. The angle three, for example, should be 270 millimeter. And then you've got a construction like this. As I said, you can get an inner or outer corner. If you apply your profiles with uh, your construction with profiles and glass, then you've got a construction like this. And uh, here you find the reference plane. Now it's reference plane from the inside. What does it mean? That means if we take a closer look here, you see this magenta colored point, the reference inside glass. So that means that your dimension are going to the inside. And if we take a look, closer look with the dimensions here, profile dimension name, total axis dimension, we got them. Then you, then you see here the reference of your input dimension, it's going exactly here to this point. <clears throat> if we change this from reference plane inside to outside, and we take a closer look to the same section, you see this reference point, the magenta one, is now here from the outside. Here is my reference dimension of the 5,400 millimeter and 2,700 millimeter. Changing it back, I like to show this again, go to the inside. You see that here, that has been also changed. And now it goes here, this 5,400 and 2,700 millimeter to this reference point. <clears throat> well, there are also some quite interesting options regarding the settings. technical and processing. <clears throat> First, let's go to the design. For the horizontal butt joint, you get a coupling gasket here. You get design gasket, coupling gasket in different sizes or aluminum foil and if we take a closer look to this, that is here this gasket we have selected. And now I change this, go back to the design, horizontal butt joint. Instead of this, I take the aluminum foil, which is uh, actually an aluminum profile. You see this here, that is here the aluminum profile you get instead of the gasket. And uh, you can also get a color coating for that. Um, going back to the technical settings, we went through the over within the design. Um, the vertical butt joint can be defined here for 10 or 15 millimeter. And the joint flexibility module type one, you can choose standard, standard or increased for AFUDC80. 
And if you mark this option and you go to help for this feature, here you got exactly a, a description of the joint flexibility here, depending on the butt joint, you get here different kind of options. Going to the type, hold spacing for pressure plates. You see that here, 250 or 500 millimeter. You can also use the help for this feature here. And here you get a full description of the connection pieces for horizontal and vertical. Going to the glazing, the glass carrier for transportation lying down from, from the height. You can define, you get special glass carrier now from 3,600 millimeter from the frame height. So if you want to transport them uh, lying down, if you click on this, go to help for this feature, you get here different kind of glass carriers for the transportation lying down. Now going to the gasket, the setting, you've got different options here, three to four millimeter, four to six millimeter and six to eight millimeter for the kettle gasket. And um, so if you take a look into our order manuals, it's the tables are shown with a four to six millimeter gasket, right? And uh, you can choose also from the other options here. Group cleats, if you take a close look at this, of course, corner cleat, you can get it crimped or nailed or screw type and corner cleats for the building corner also nailed or for the screw type. Something that's quite useful, you can change the installation sequence. Now it is set to outside view from the right to the left. If you take a look at the construction from the right, you see here field number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. It goes from the right to the left, but you can change it around. So the big advantage of the unitized facade is that you can work here one by one field and you put the saddle gasket here on top and then you can work on the second level. But now it goes from the right to the left and also you get the materials in the material list in this sequence. And you can also use view from the left to the right. You see what happens then? It starts here, right? Here on the left hand side, that's number one and it goes the other way around. So it's a matter of the installation at the construction site. <clears throat> and what happens if you want to work on one plane, then on the second plane, and the, after that on the third plane, you can work it individually. Um, for example, if you make a right click on one field, define sequence, you click on that, and then you make a multiple selection by, by holding the control button. So if you want to add this field in this order, and then for example, you want to use that order, and then here, then you see, Shikai does what you want it, you get. 
from number one, from the right here in this field to the left. Here you find five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it goes further right. Okay, so that is that is a matter of the sequence you can define. So you are totally flexible with this construction. And uh, you have to know if you define your own sequence, uh, then that has also priority over the installation sequence you see here in the technical settings. It's still outside view from the left to the right, but you make it individual. You make an individual sequence and uh, that counts first. And for the ventilated spandrel version, you can use a frame or a single bar installation. Right, that is the three-dimensional part. And uh, then now let's talk about some special things regarding openings. I click on that. Right, so <clears throat> you can add insert units using the system AWS 140, 14 and uh, AWS 140 SI. And uh, for that, you can use projected top hung windows and parallel opening windows. They can be added here in the appropriate fields. Uh, the design here, of CV, it's a little bit special. Now we've got a standard with a large front chamber. And if I click on that, I've used the parallel opening type 270. And now let's take a closer look to the section here. What you get is an insert out of frame here like that. Okay, with this kind of opening. And um, if you use another kind of parallel opening window, which is a new opening type, it's 280. Parallel opening window CV, if you click on that, what you get is, Let's take a closer look to the section here. No insert out of frame. So that is your opening now here with the following restriction here on the field next to this opening. You cannot add any opening types. And also it's not possible to do this above. Now I go make an undo so that we get the insert out of frame. In this case, if you click on that, you see that here, the different kind of openings are available now. So that means if you work with a concealed construction, in this case, on the fields next to the opening, you cannot add any other opening, right? If you use the design CV, then you just can add the opening 280 and 281 for the parallel window and also for the projected top hung window. And if you use the design standard with a small front chamber, only insert outer frames are possible, no concealed construction. Well, now coming to the CDS. <clears throat> How does it work, the sun shading? If you select one field and you make a right click and you want to add an 
CDS, it is not possible because there are a couple of rules for the for the CDS. So first, above the selected fields, you need to have a further fixed field like that here on top. That is one rule. You need this for this blind box for the CDS. And uh, in the field of the blind box, you have to add also a panel that is the second rule of it. The fields, they need a rectangular shape. And that is the reason why you cannot add the CDS by just clicking on one opening here. And uh, the blind box field must have the same width as the selected field. So now, if I make here a multiple selection over the entire width, and now I make a right click and I can add and CDS, and that works. See that? And also a rule is the minimum field above of this field I've selected now must be 400 millimeter. And between the blind box field here and the selected field below, you need a slash bar with 80 millimeter profile width and a cover cap with 15 millimeter profile height. So these are the rules of our catalog here. Well, and then you've got the option here. I've selected now here the CDS close to the facade or away from the facade. If you take a look to this transfer, uh, to the smile in here, sorry. And if we use the section here from the CDS, you see that here, this construction, keep it in mind, that was close to the facade and away from the facade, you can have a different section like this. And you can also use here the other option, the position of the motor, for example, the fabric type, if you want to get flexible, passive, special, or special fabric, you can define the color here, the surface finish for the aluminum profile. So these are all the parameters you automatically get when you add the CDS. And by the way, the better view of the close or away to the facade you get here at the bottom, right? If you click on that, that was away from the facade and close to the facade, click on that, then get, you get the groove here closer to your facade. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the small introduction of Shikal using the unitized facade Shiku AF UDC 80. I hope, and I'm also pretty sure that helps you a little bit if you start working with this kind of facade and uh, don't hesitate if there are any questions to contact us at the Shiku Digital Support. And for the technical consulting, please ask our um, technicians from Shuko in order to get any help you need. So for now, thank you for your attention. And um, I say goodbye and auf Wiedersehen.